In this demo, we're going to use the same two images that were used in the Photoshop assessment to introduce you to the concept of a layer mask. Now, in general, a mask is something that either reveals or hides a certain part of the image. What's nice about using layer masks to do the same thing that most of you were using selection tools to do is that it is a non-destructive process, meaning that the entire image is still there. So if you realize that you need more area or need less area than you originally had selected or exposed or hidden, you can go back in and very easily with some of the brush tools add or remove that visibility from the image. So it's also a really nice um, fluid way to work. You don't have to select something and then feather it. You can use brushes to do everything and make the gradient make the uh, gradient from opaque to transparent happen pretty seamlessly. So to start with, please go ahead and grab those two images off Blackboard and put them into one image. Right? You can open maybe open the My maybe open the Miley Cyrus image and then select the entire. Um, Steve Buscemi image and copy it in there. Uh, dragging and dropping it might work as well. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is um, we're going to scale Steve Buscemi's face up so that it more or less matches Miley Cyrus's face in orientation and scale. And so to do that, I'm going to use the move tool. I want to make sure that show transform controls is checkmarked. And then I'm going to adjust the opacity of Steve Buscemi's face down to about 50%. All right, so now we're going to have both of their faces overlapping. I can see both of them. Um, I could do multiply, um, which might make it actually easier to see both faces rather than normal, um, because the eyes really stand out even though it's 50% opaque because they're so dark. So now we just need to start adjusting Steve's head. And I'm going to begin by rotating it so that his eyes are, I mean, his eyes are kind of lopsided anyway, but there's, so they're overlapping, right, at approximately the right angle. Um, they're pretty straight, and maybe I need to boost up the opacity just a bit so I can see this a little bit better. And as you can tell, things are starting to get creepy already. Let's go ahead and bend this a touch more to the side pull this over. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the center of the bridge of their nose aligned. Because what I can do then is I can grab this center of rotation or center of whatever. I can grab the center. I can move it up here. And now if I go and scale this out and hold down shift and option and scale from the corner, it'll pull out from that point. So as I scale his eyes up, their faces are remaining centered on one another. And I might get to a point where I realize maybe his eyes are a little bit too high, maybe they're too low, but really I want to make sure that their chins more or less align and their eyes more or less align. And I might nudge his face just down or up a little bit. His eyes aren't quite as open as hers are. So that's something to be aware of. And I'm just gonna leave this here. And then maybe I need to rotate his head just a touch more. And again, his eyes aren't necessarily <laughs> all that straight. I mean, that's probably one of the reasons why he looks like Steve Buscemi and no one else. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this here. All right, so I've got these two layers. Oh, and now I need to double click to make sure that that transform is set. Their heads more or less align. Her face is a little fuller. His ear is sticking out to the side a bit. Maybe I do need to move his head over just a little bit more. Um, they're not quite at the exact same angle. So really, we just need to get it close. And then the nice thing is, once we start masking this, if we realize there's a big issue, we can go in and fix it and move his face across hers. OK, so we've got things started. So now let's go ahead and change this back to normal and make our opacity 100% again. Right. OK, so now we need to create a mask for this layer. Because what we want to do is we either want to hide his entire face or reveal it all and then cover it up. And so to do that, we want to have this layer selected. And we need to go up to the Layer menu. If you've watched the color correction demo, you've already 
been exposed to this menu. And instead of a new fill layer um, or a new adjustment layer, we need to go down to layer mask and we're gonna start with hide all. We could do either or, it doesn't really matter, but we're gonna start with hide all. And when I do that, Steve disappears. But you'll notice over here in the um, layers panel that there is now this black box that is linked to the image of Steve Buscemi. And this black, and you'll notice there's these white corners around the edges. That means that I am currently in the mode where I would be editing that mask rather than editing the actual image of Steve Buscemi's face. So when you're working with masks, this is something to be aware of, right? That you want to make sure you're on the right layer um, and you actually have the mask selected if that's what you want to edit. If you're trying to edit his face and it's not working, it's probably because you have the mask selected or vice versa. If you're trying to edit the mask and you actually have his face selected. So I've done this. So now the way that we edit these masks is really simple. You can do, um, you use the brush tool or any of the painting tools or the eraser tool in order to make these edits. And so because black means that the mask is hiding something, in order to reveal stuff, I need to use white. So in the color picker, or in the color switcher here, I can click on these arrows and I can make white the foreground color. And then I can go and use my trusty brush. I'm actually gonna be using my drawing tablet to do this, but the mouse actually works really well for this. So I'm gonna go and grab the brush. It's also the letter B on the keyboard. And currently my opacity is 100%. Um, this is set to 35, the hardness is zero. This is a great size for what I'm doing. If your brush isn't set to that, go ahead and set it to 35 pixels in size and have the hardness be zero. And we don't need to have it in any weird mode or anything like that. And so I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna start drawing. And as you'll see, I need to adjust his eyes because they're way off. <laughs> But I'm going to do that once I get these filled in just a little bit more, right? And I'm going to start by just doing his eyes and just doing it a little bit around where they are. So I can see, I can find the edges of both of these. Now this eye is actually pretty well lined up. But again, maybe I need to make his head just a little bit bigger because his eyes are kind of small on his face. So maybe I need to adjust the size of this layer and adjust where it's set to. So I'm going to go ahead and... I've got these eyes set. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make sure I click on the image of him to be able to change this. I'm gonna use my move tool and you'll see that I get this. Now something else you can do is you can right click on here and you can disable the layer mask. So if you need to see his whole face for some reason, um, if you click disable, you'll see you get this red cross on there and then you can see his whole face, All right? I'm gonna enable it and I'm going to hold down option so I can zoom out a little bit more. And then I'm gonna go ahead and maybe nudge him over just a little bit so his eyes are more centered. I'm gonna take the center up here again, right between his eyes. And then I'm going to scale him up a little bit more. All right, so his eyes more readily fit her face. There we go. They're definitely like covering up her eyelids and eyebrows and stuff now, or her eyelashes a little bit more, although she has huge eyelashes. And we'll work on that some. But this more fits her face, right? It's looking pretty rough, but it's starting to fit her face. So I'm still set on editing the mask, which is great. And now I'm going to go back to my brush tool. I'm going to apply the transformation first, go back to my brush tool. Hold down Command and or Control and Zero to zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to change my brush. I'm gonna increase the size a little bit, maybe to 60 pixels. And I'm gonna set the opacity to maybe 50% for the time being, All right? Because I don't want the hard edge that I've had, and granted it's still a feathered edge, but I really wanna be able to come in here and start to bring details in, but not totally eliminate her face, right? So I can get some of Steve's wrinkles coming in, right? I can come down here, you know, get some bags under her eyes, get some of that greasiness of 
Steve Buscemi's face, he really does look like he has some serious issues with health. Right. Oh, there we go. Now we're getting the, the full like eye socket action. I'm just going to see if I can bring some of this downer cheek. Now if I make a mistake, I can either use the eraser tool to come in here and erase what I've done, or I could just hit shift op command option Z or shift, sorry, command option Z or alt control Z to undo a couple of those steps. Okay. All right. So now I've got his eyes set in there. Um, and this is a point where using um, color correction would be wise. And we're going to do it quickly and not so precisely this time as we did before. Something else we can do, which we'll talk about here in a second, is we're going to add some, add some chin here, but we'll wait on that. Okay, so first, so we've got his eyes, his beautiful, beautiful eyes in our face. So we want to make sure we click on his face so we're editing the right thing. And then we want to go up to adjustment layers and we're going to go with hue saturation. We're going to do this quick and dirty. We're going to do hue saturation. Now, if I start adjusting things right now, right, if I start pulling this over, it adjusts her entire face, right? <laughs> so now she's a horrible teal color. We don't want that. So there's a way that you can tell Photoshop to only apply this effect to the layer immediately below it. And that's by using this little button here, right? Currently it says, no, it's not going to be attached. But as soon as I click on this, it's now, if I look over here, you'll see that my layer panel has changed and I've got this little drop down arrow. And that's telling me this adjustment layer is linked to here and it's not going to affect anything else below it. So now I can go in and adjust his eyes, right? And obviously that's not what we want. I mean, there's some creepy beauty there, but no, no. And let's see here. What we want is a, just a tiny change, right? She's just a little warmer than he is. He's a little bit too yellow. So if I'm pulling it this way, I'm going to negative, I feel like negative seven is probably good, right? So now his eyes are starting to match that, her skin tone a little bit more. I might even drop the saturation of the color just a touch. Negative 19 is too much. Negative 10 is pretty good. There's still a little bit too much darkness in there. And so maybe I need to even lighten it up just a hair because the color, there we go, right? Because the color in her image is really, you know, pretty washed out. Like there aren't any super dark shadows except under her head because the flash is almost straight at her face. Um, and so some of these wrinkles and stuff wouldn't show quite the same way. All right, now this is quick and dirty, right? We're making Miley Cyrus have Steve Buscemi eyes. So we could have taken Steve Buscemi's photo and her photo and applied the, the techniques from the tutorial before this in order to get these to be really close together to start with. But in this case, I just wanted to work a little bit faster. And the creepiness and greasiness kind of makes it all right. So using a layer mask, I've been able to add her eyes there. Now, the nice thing is, right, if I realize that this line is too much on her cheek, again, I can use my eraser tool and come in here and just get rid of some of that. Oh, but you'll notice that what I'm doing is I'm actually eliminating the hue saturation on here. So something I haven't talked about is whenever you create an adjustment layer, you are you have a mask that gets created with it and you can edit that mask. So if I click here, I can switch back to editing what I'm the adjustments and here is the mask, right? And so I should probably get rid of that little blob that I just drew on there. Right? Oh, and I should probably make the opacity 100% temporarily so that I can really get rid of that. There we go. Okay. So what I really want to do is I want to select the layer mask here. I want to come in here 
and I want to erase some of that line. Now with his eyes they are a little less contrasty than her face so I might want to add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer and add that to this and then also right because I have all this extra space to work I can come in here and I can start to give her a little bit of a goatee right? and again I think I do want to increase the the brightness and contrast so I'm going to do this and again I want to make sure that it is linked only to his eyes and I'm just going to pull the contrast up just a touch because that makes that goatee look much nicer. I might want to erase his lip there. Oops, again, on the wrong layer. It's all right, not the end of the world. So there you have it. This is the basic intro to how to use masks in Photoshop. And we're actually going to um, do one more demo that bridges the ideas of color correction with using masks in order to make a much more surreal image.